Welcome to Biblio Bistro. My name is Megan Jazak and I am a registered dietitian and community health educator with the Portage Health Foundation. Hi everyone, I'm Michael Stenitis. I'm the program coordinator at Portage Lake District Library. Michael, did you used to cook at all in your past? I did, I had a lot of cooking jobs in the past 20 years and I used to be a cheese maker. No way. Yep, I milked goats and made cheese on the Big Bear Peninsula. Oh my goodness, what was your favorite cheese to make? Feta. Feta? Mm -hmm. Goes with everything. It's even great for dessert. Well, now I'm hungry. <laughs> Biblio Bistro is hosted by the Portage Lake District Library in partnership with the Portage Health Foundation. We hope that this cooking series will be approachable to all comfort levels of cooking, that it will be affordable. It's going to feature fresh seasonal produce grown here in the Upper Peninsula, and it will be nutritious. And did I mention tasty? It's going to be really good. And we should give a shout out to the local farmer's markets while we're here because we want to support all of those. On Tuesdays, you can find food at the Houghton Market, Wednesdays in Barraga, Thursdays in Hancock, and on Saturdays, there's one in Lons, Calumet, and... Um, I believe Bruce's Crossing? And yep, and Lake, Lake Linden. Linden. Yep. Okay. And if you want to find specifics about any of those farmer's markets, you can visit www wupfoodsystems.com, or you can click the show notes listed below. And if you'd like to cook alongside, feel free to visit www.phfgive.org slash bibliobistro, or either the PHF or the Portage Lake District Library's Facebook page. We'll be posting the recipe and shopping list ahead of time so that you can cook with us. Uh, today's recipe is chimichurri. So chimichurri is a really fresh, herb packed sauce um, and the reason we picked this was because it's simple it's really really flavorful it's packed with nutrients and you can use it in a lot of different ways and you can get most of these things at the farmers markets you can get your herbs garlic peppers um not the lemon <laughs> be great if we could <laughs> <laughs> but most of the things you can pick up here right now and the garlic the garlic will be a little bit later in the summer but you can pick up most of it right now um, as far as equipment goes, it's pretty simple. Um, you could use a Cuisinart blender, you could use an immersion blender, or you can just go old school and do it by hand. So. Awesome. Um, and the total price for all of these ingredients um, is comes to $7.48 per serving. It's $0.94 cents per serving, eight servings per recipe. All righty. Should we get cooking? I think we should. All right. So the first thing you want to do is a little prep and we're going to do, you can make chimichurri with a couple different herbs. Um, you can use cilantro, but for those folks who don't like cilantro, parsley is a really great option. And that's what I'm going to use today. I just wanted to show you guys the um, cilantro. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these leaves off and I'm going to use the immersion blender because that's my uh, go-to for stuff like this. And I'm just going to use a cup and you can uh, pluck them off painstakingly one at a time or you can just do it the way I would do it and just roughly chop the tops leaving all your stems behind like you don't need all of those stems no big shake so I'm going to throw that in there right in here I'm going to do a little chopping of some garlic I peeled some of it because that's a, a real time sucker and you can just roughly chop the garlic, throw that in there, and our lemon. I'm gonna just do it this way. You have, um, this is a great tool, the- uh, The citrus reamer. That's it, the citrus reamer. Um, I'm just gonna go like this, and do it right in there. And Megan, could I have that salt Absolutely. and the olive oil, please? I would be happy to. Okay, so. now I'm just gonna, I'm not a big measurer, but you could do this, and I would say maybe throw about a teaspoon in. And then we wanna do, you wanna do about, um, about equal parts oil and herbs. So I'm gonna roughly do about a half a cup. Again, measuring is great if you need to do it. No shame in not doing it. And we'll give this a go. We'll see how this works. Oh yeah. 
Now, another nice little option to this recipe is some heat. And you could get that. Oh, Megan, I'm going to have you spot me there for a minute. Sure, so we don't, absolutely. I'm going to throw a little jalapeno on there, too. And this is a great way. You want to get the seeds out of the jalapeno because those are going to burn places you don't want to burn later. Like your hands or your nose or your eyes. That's going to be the rough one. But if you get most of the seeds out this way without actually touching them, then you're good to go. And I'm just going to give this a couple of rough little chops. And that. And I'm just going to lift it with my knife. I'm having like as little contact with my skin as I can with the pepper. Here we go. That'll work. Perfect. And this Megan. is looking bright and green. Yummy. Delicious. I'm just gonna blend this up. You can use this immersion blender for tons of stuff, right, Michael? Yeah, I use it for all my sauces. Um, it's uh, it's a really it's a great tool to have in the kitchen, and it's so much easier than cleaning up the food processor. If you were going to do a big batch of that uh, of this, you could the the food processor that would be a good way to go. But this is awesome. And okay. If you don't have either an immersion blender or a food processor, could you chop these things up as is, and would it work okay? Yeah, it would totally work okay. The herbs are still going to flavor the oil, which is that's what you're after anyway. Now, um, we could also add some bay leaves, but what you would want to do is you would want to add the bay leaf in, not grind it up, and then just put it in there for flavoring if you were going to let it sit out, you know, for a couple hours, and then just pull that out before you serve it. Perfect. And something else that you can add, it's not required, is uh, paprika, and that is just going to add a little bit of an extra flavor here. How would you describe paprika, Michael? Mm, I like smoked paprika. Yeah? It's like, yeah, it makes it really, it's kind of sweet. Um, it just adds another layer, another layer of flavor. Oh, are you ready to try it? I would love to try it. How are you going to do it? Well, I've got some slices of bread that we can dip over it. And nice. We can make like a little toast. We can put some cherry tomatoes on top. Sounds great. Okay. Let's do it. All right. And another little thing, one of the great things about having a sauce like this is you can just have a really easy meal lined up at home, um, be it like a burrito, whatever. And you can just make it that much, you know, more special or different than you're used to having it by putting a little sauce on it. So, yum. That looks yummy. And we'll start with that one. So you're just going to pour it right on there? Yeah, I think we can just put a little. And if you guys, just wait till you see this color. It is bright and vibrant. This can be put on so many different things. Um, I like to put it actually on scrambled eggs or on tacos. Um, it's really, really nice in the wintertime when it's cold. This is so bright with the garlic, the olive oil, the fresh herbs. Um, and while it's great to get this in season too, most of those things are also available when, you know, it's off season in the markets and it's still relatively inexpensive. And it's a nice way to feel the taste of summer when it's really cold and dark. So this is a really fun recipe in a lot of different ways. Um, additionally, it's got a lot of health benefits that are really just the, the icing on the cake. Oh, yeah. yeah. So when we look at fresh herbs, we've got tons of different nutrients that are coming into play here. Um, when we're looking at the parsley in particular, there's a lot of heart healthy benefits. It actually has been shown to help with your blood pressure. And garlic has also been shown to help with blood pressure as well. Ooh. Um, parsley is also known to help with your, your stomach. So especially when we're looking at digestion, if you're having any difficulties, um, particularly if you have any issues with bowel movements, that can kind of help clear things through. Um, I would like to note that the garlic in here can actually cause some GI or stomach distress for people. Um, garlic is really hard to break down. And so that's something, if you have a sensitive stomach, if you have anything like irritable bowel, you might want to leave the raw garlic out and try something like a garlic infused oil or you could just add a little bit of garlic powder that tends to be better tolerated for people. Um, we also have tons of antioxidants that's found in the olive oil, the garlic, all of the greens that we're using. Antioxidants are really great um, in terms of preventing cellular damage. And so every day we're, our bodies are kind of fighting off, you know, whether it's pollution, stress, all these things that are trying to kind of knock away at our, our cells' DNA. And antioxidants help protect that 
They protect mm. your cells. They're fighting for you. So this is packed with all sorts of antioxidants. Yum. For you. It's good too. And it's tasty. It's coming up. All right. The one knife will do it all, folks. Mm. <laughs> Get my little cherry tomato on that. Nice bread. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, that's super yummy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's summer in a bite. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for all the vegetables to start coming in on the market. Mm-hmm. This would be good with anything. You could make a vegetable salad, have it with bread. I'd even put this on some pasta. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Like you could make a primavera pasta. What's a primavera in. pasta? Mm -hmm. Just steamed vegetables, pasta, and a yummy little sauce like that. I mean, wow. nothing fancy. Yum. Mm. Super yummy. You can also use it as a sauce for meats as well. That's actually the traditional reason that I believe chimichurri was used. Mm. Um, so that's an option for those that do eat meat. You could always drizzle that. I think a lot of people will use it with red meats, but I think it would work with mm -hmm. pretty much any type of meat that you have or meat substitute, even like beans or chicken. Yeah, I've had grilled beef with it before. And okay. it's really good. Like a piece of beef tenderloin on the grill. Mm -hmm. You could even do it with a burger. But it'd still be super yummy. Perfect. Yeah, and I think something like a veggie burger, or even like a roasted portobello, like for those that might not eat meat, yep. drizzle that on top. That would be fabulous. That sounds great. I'm also chewing. <laughs> it's chewy bread. <clears throat> if you'd like to connect, um, you can search Biblio Bistro on either YouTube, Facebook for either the Portage Health Foundation or on their Instagram account. And that's true for the library as well, Portage Lake District Library. Yep. You can also visit www.phfgive.org slash bibliobistro and you can see what other cooking series that we have up and fun recipes that you can try and cook at home as well. And if you cook with us, you can share pictures by using the hashtag bibliobistro and that's all one word. Perfect. Thanks, well, thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, folks. Bon appetit. Bon appetit.